In this video, we're going to talk about how we get access to our cash while we're traveling internationally. Okay, so we have been asked several times about getting access to our cash that are in U.S. banks while we're traveling internationally. And I think it's less of a problem when you're just traveling on a trip, on a short trip, when you're going on vacation for a couple weeks to Europe and you say, hey, you know what? I, maybe I'll just bring a bunch of cash with me or I'll just exchange it at the airport and have enough for, for the time that I'm there. But if you're going to travel, if you're going to live in another country internationally and you have your bank in your country that you're from, it can be tricky to go one from one bank to another or in Europe especially, like a lot of places don't accept most of my credit cards. And the, the ones that do, usually, um, you know, there's a foreign transaction fee where you're getting ding mm -hmm. a couple percent every time. Or use the ATM, you're getting ding here and there. Yeah, if you live full time, that's a lot of dings. It ends up being very expensive, <laughs> for sure. So we want to talk about just how we kind of get by that. And we don't necessarily get by it, but we have found banks and services that make this much less painful for us. Some things we're able to do because uh, we have residency here in Croatia. For example, we have a, a monthly plan on our cell phone in Croatia, but you can only do that if you're a Croatian resident right. because you have to open a bank account. And to open a bank account, you have to have so their security. equivalent of like a social yeah. security number here. So we have that and in, in, in we can do that. But obviously you don't have, you know, countries that, well, Outside of Croatia, we can still go and we don't have to worry about that. But I want to just share with you guys some of the services like the banks that I use. When we decided to go down to Mexico, mm -hmm. Canada wasn't such a problem for some reason. We never really thought mm -hmm. about, you know, because every time we went to Canada, it was only for a couple months at a time. And I think at the we most. always pay with credit card. We weren't yeah. worried about cash like in Mexico and a lot of Europe. We spent six months straight in Mexico and then we came back and then we basically spent an equivalent of about 10 months out of a 12 month period in Mexico. So we had to figure out how to efficiently get access to our mm -hmm. cash while we're down there because I was still working as a freelancer for a US company and actually as a full time employee for a while. Mm -hmm. So my money was getting deposited into my US bank account. And what I did is before we went to Mexico is I opened up a, um, a Charles Schwab investment account. And with an investment account, you don't have to deposit any money into your investment account. You can open an investor savings account that's, that's tied to it. And with that, you get an ATM card. And what the investment savings account of Charles Schwab allows you to do is it allows you to take money out of your account at any ATM without paying any fees or foreign transaction fee. It's just a benefit that they have. It's kind of like their teaser that gets people to invest uh, your money through their investment services. You don't have to. We've, we've had this Charles Schwab account for going on five years now. I don't use Charles Schwab as, as my stock brokerage, but I still have my uh, savings account with them and I still use it every day. When I need to get money, that's where I get you know get my money out of. They you do get when you go to an ATM, it will say okay this ATM is going to charge you a certain amount, and you just accept it. And what Charles Schwab does, they detect all these fees that you get you get charged, and they reimburse you every month. And I think there's an upper limit on how much they'll reimburse, but I've never hit that limit. It seems I think it was pretty high. I'm not sure exactly what it is, twenty five dollars a month or mm -hmm. something. So that's never happened. And when I go to the ATM, I generally take out enough money to last us a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'm only going like two, three times at the most to the ATM when we're in Mexico anyways. Yeah, maybe it's $3, so it's not more than 10 bucks. No, so it's not, not more. close to that limit. N not even close. So that's, that's worked out really, really, really well. The thing that you do have to be a little bit aware of is it would be difficult to get the ATM card replaced if you were to lose it or if it got demagnetized or if you, you know, if, if it was cloned and there was a fraud, you had to cancel it. 
it's difficult to get mail. So this goes into this, this whole other side of how to get mail, which internationally it's much, much harder than getting mm-hmm. mail within the United States. We haven't really figured out a good way yet. It just basically you just have to ask Tiny family money. and friend to yeah. you know send stuff over. So for us, we've been using the Charles Schwab service. It's been really great. But there's also a couple other things that we use. Oh, so just just so for the logistics and the behind the scenes in Charles Schwab, I try to keep a a certain amount of money in there. I think it's around a thousand dollars. Every every time I withdraw, I instantly go to my regular bank and transfer that money back to replenish it to top it off at that amount, whatever that amount it is for you. So for me. It takes always takes like four working days for that money to show up. So you really have to stay on top of this. When you de- when you withdraw money, you want to make sure you transfer it over right away because it'll take four working days to get there. And if you come across an emergency where you have to take out a lot of money, mm-hmm. you may be stuck with no cash for up to four working days until you can get that money transferred over. I think that may have happened to us once. Yeah, it sounds familiar all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> that may have happened to us once in Oaxaca. <laughs> so, you know, keep in mind that either if you think you're going to need more money coming up, just transfer more money into it ahead mm-hmm. of time, and then you'll have money to withdraw. Um, otherwise, there, there's no need to keep a high balance in there. Just keep your balance wherever you normally keep your account. Just tie those banks together so you can transfer back and forth. Mm-hmm. So that's Charles Schwab, mm-hmm. really useful. And then the other two services I want to talk about on this one is one is called a service called TransferWise. It's not a U.S. company. I want to say it's from like Australia or Europe or something. I have no idea. <clears throat> I don't really know. So don't quote me on that. But TransferWise is a service that you can use to transfer from... Um, one bank to another bank across countries. So also tr- across currencies too. These things are getting kind of popular, especially we see people use that a lot in Europe. Um, but there are some occasionally at the beginning of your using the service, they'll, there may be some red flags raised because you know they really worry about money laundering. In, in Europe, so when they they don't want to see like transferring a large amount of money from a U.S. account to a, a account in Europe, for example. Right. And sometimes they want you to call them. Or the first times, I've had to email or call them once to say, "Hey, no, this is just me living here now. I want to transfer money over." So we had just to do that. Trying to pay our phone bill. Just trying to pay our <laughs> bills. So we we have our like I said earlier, Marlene has her bank account. She opened a bank account with mm-hmm. her social security number here in mm-hmm. Croatia and with that we're able to open our our um, cell phone plan yeah. cell phone monthly account mm-hmm. so we kind of do the same thing there we use TransferWise to transfer money from my US bank account to our Croatian bank account mm-hmm. it does cost uh, a fee I think it's like 2% maybe but we also don't do this very often, so it's not that big a deal. You don't get reimbursed for it. That's how these people make money. Mm-hmm. So TransferWise allows us to transfer money directly. You can also go through your Charles Schwab, withdraw cash from the ATM, and then take that cash, and then just use that to pay for your phone bill, or use that to de- de- uh, deposit into a foreign bank account, so you can have money in that account to pay. In Croatia, they have this really cool, like, strange looking barcode thing that Mm -hmm. everybody uses all the banking apps the phone apps and all these different apps you just scan this barcode and then it just pays that bill for you automatically it's really easy so that's why we like using Mm -hmm. the balance well that's why we like transferring money into her account and pay from there yeah and i just to like first time we heard about transfer wise another traveler like sent us a a link like kind of like an affiliate link and it sounded kind of scammy in the beginning but we totally use it and it's not scammy. It just sounds it because everybody in their affiliate links. <laughs> I know. Us included. We have affiliate links too. Uh, yeah, but just but we when are, we first we are we are we're not trying to like trick people into clicking, you know. When yeah. it's affiliate link, yeah. we make it very clear. No, but when we first heard about it, it was an affiliate link, so it made me not want to trust it. Yeah. But yeah. it's a legit thing people travel We use choose. it at least every month. Yeah if not a couple times a month. And then recently, this last year, I also found this other service called Revolut. 
Um, it's similar to TransferWise, I guess. Like when you both TransferWise and Revolut have a lot of overlap. But what Revolut has that's kind of cool is Revolut lets you generate virtual credit card numbers. So the thing tricky about buying stuff in other countries versus the US is that some services you can only buy with credit cards that are issued in that country's currency. Mm -hmm. So if I want to use a credit card in some countries and pay for like a monthly service or just just buy something online through their like, you know, online website, um, U.S. credit cards sometimes won't work. Yeah. So this Revolut service will let you generate a virtual credit card number in that country's currency using your balance in your Revolut account. So that's pretty cool because then you can use that. For example, we could have used this. We didn't have this when we were in Norway. Mm -hmm. We could have used this to up to top off our Finnish, our Finland oh, yeah. sell plan. We had a had lot we of had it. Yeah, because yeah, we were trying to renew. We are in Norway for two months and we wanted to renew our, our Nordic phone plan that we bought in Finland, which is good all over the Nordic, Norway included. But we couldn't do it because we were in Norway. And we tried to do it with our credit card. We couldn't put money in. And uh, we ended up having to drive all the way back to Finland to do it. <laughs> but had we had Revolut at the time, that would have worked for us. So that's pretty cool. And the other thing that they do is they, uh, they'll they actually give you a physical credit card too in the mail. And you can use that, you know, just like you do anything else. And now, now in Europe, I think the U.S. is starting to catch up. They do a lot of this contactless credit cards. Yeah, nobody's... Has a chip. Every time you pay with your credit card, you're like, has a chip. It yeah, has sorry, a chip. you have to put the chip in. You have to and, touch and this thing. And they have to find a pen because they're not used to people signing. Yeah, early, right. Archaic. With the contactless one, you never have to sign. With the, okay. the chip one, you have to sign sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, we were in we were in Germany last year. We went to, uh, we went to the Air Force Base. We went to Rammstein Air Force Base to yeah. just to eat at the Taco Bell there. As you do. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You uh, you pay for with dollars there, and everything's like American when we went to yeah. the Air Force Base. So I was blown away because after a year and a half of traveling Europe, I hadn't seen this. They actually still swiped the credit card at the machine, which nobody does here anymore. Yeah. Actually, I don't even think there are machines that have little slots for swiping anymore. So yeah, that's that's something you have to keep in mind of. So when you come to Europe, if you want to use one of your credit cards, um, find a credit card. That doesn't charge foreign transaction fees. Find a credit card that's made for travelers. We use the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card, which is great. We got a bunch of points when we first signed up. And then we uh, we got a bunch of points from just traveling. They always have different specials that, mm -hmm. that get you that get you like triple points or whatever. Are we we actually end up no, we end up we end up buying are, this camera oh. with all the points. I was just gonna say, I don't think we use the points. No, because our because our Sony A7 III oh. camera microphone port died right. when we were trying to make a bunch of videos and then we ended up buying the Sony A6600 with our Chase, Chase Sapphire mm -hmm. credits and we basically got the camera from using that credit card. Sounds like this is like sponsored but it's not. You <laughs> just sound very sponsory all of a sudden. But again, <laughs> having these credit cards means that if you need to get a renewal, if you get a fraud detected and you, know, they have, you have to cancel the car, get a new car, mm -hmm. That's that could be hairy. So, you know, keep in mind, those are things that are trickier to do. It takes time, obviously, for a new car to get here. Somebody has to be at your mailing address in the U.S. to receive the card, activate it. Or mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe they don't activate it, but send it to you. Yeah. So it's good to have backups. It's good to have backups. So we have. Yeah. So we have TransferWise, Revolut. They sort of back each other up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We have our Chase Sapphire credit card and then I have my Charles Schwab ATM card which is also a Visa car. So that backs us up a little bit. I can have two cards to choose from. But then also, I can always just get cash out with my Schwab account. Mm -hmm. So that's been working out really good. And also now we have your Croatian bank account and we can yeah. always transfer money to it directly from my US bank account mm -hmm. to your Croatian account through TransferWise mm -hmm. and then get cash out that way if we had to. Yeah. So anyways, having a bunch of choices is what is what we're trying to say here. And, and also some of these are kind of unique features that these accounts have that you may, you guys may want to check out. So there'll be a blog post on Freely Roaming that has all this stuff linked. Yeah, for sure. You guys can go check it out. So these are our tips for how we access our cash while we're traveling internationally. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. And we'll see you guys in the next one.